Hey guys, it's Wads with the Wads Up channel. How are you guys doing? It's been forever and a day since we've hung out. So today, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna hang out. And we're in beautiful BC. Look at those gorgeous BC mountains behind me. Destination undisclosed. You probably recognize this. This was the destination where we first started the Overland build, and that's what we're doing today. We're doing a rig review walk around. Now, some of you guys may remember, we did an Overland build about a year ago. So we're gonna do a review today. Well, a little bit of a walk around. I'm gonna share with you guys what I like and what I don't like so much. <laughs> but if uh, you guys didn't get enough from today's summary walk around, just go check out my playlist. It's an Overland build playlist. And we got about a dozen vids there. You know you're doing an Overland build when you're removing body parts. That drill is how I feel inside right now. Without further ado, let me introduce you to the 2014 F-150 FX4. This is the, the Wadsmobile, it's the beast. And we did a full build on her. Let's start from the front here. We got the Cervini Snarly Gnarly Hood. It's a fiberglass hood. It's actually a functioning intake, so it actually sucks the air into the intake. It's not just for looks. I don't know what it does for power a whole lot, probably not a whole lot, but it, it does help the, keep the engine a little bit cooler. I, but it's mostly just for looks, let's just be honest. <laughs> it, it looks snarly and gnarly. Next up, we got the rolling big power grill there. We've got throttle down customs tdk this bad boy is a monster <laughs> it is but it's awesome though i love the integrated spots for the floodlight or the uh, the light bar excuse me flood and fog lights tucked in there nice nicely so that's nice this is a hand-built bumper cnc hand-built bumper uh fitment was really nice this is one of the things I really did enjoy in this build was this was the armor and the bumper here. Love how the uh, the worn winch fits in there nicely. So that's the worn winch, 10,000 pounds with a synthetic rope. And you've got some recovery points on either side. The bar doesn't come up too high. You can get them where they come up a lot higher. Um, and that's all I wanted there. These guys are in Montana. So uh, it's not, not cheap stuff though. This is Slasher here. Wondering who that is. That's Slasher all the way around. So wherever you see lights, that's Slasher. Got the Bushwhacker uh, wheel well or mud guards. Rims and tires. That's by Fuel Off Road. So we've got the 18 by nine crush rim and the boots on there are called the Gripper. They're 35s also by Fuel. We got Lightner's active cargo system. This thing is absolutely bomber and it's super functional. That's why they call it the active cargo system. Again, I did a full review on that on the Overland build series in my playlist. I'll leave that in the show notes. This is Lightner's gear pod. I put boots and gloves and dirty stuff in there. You got Max tracks here. They're great, especially in sandy areas like this. And, um, just one point though on the Max tracks, I actually was in the snow um, a while back and the road wasn't w uh, wide enough. So I used these just to kind of help the truck from not actually sliding off the trail. So, I mean, they're good for recovery, of course, but they, uh, they also help to, I mean, this truck's huge. So it helped to actually, you know, provide a little road where there wasn't road and uh, give me a little stability crawling through this bit of a sketchy little spot. So enough of that. We got discount ramp here. Uh, I did a review on that as well. And we got the Husqvarna FE501 on the back. We're losing light on this side a bit, but hopefully you can see it. We got the Roto Packs, fuel and water, two gallons a piece. Again, another gear pod by Lightner. Now, first aid kit, outer limit supply. It's called the Outback Series 6500. This thing, un 
flipping believable. Has everything you could possibly need in a first aid kit or possibly even imagine. And some, it's built and designed um, from a gentleman uh, that works for the fire department and he's a first responder, knows intimately well what you should have in a first aid kit, especially when you're overlanding or dirt biking. Amazing kit and it's got a quick release, it comes off super quick, obviously. <laughs> And, uh, but I did a review on that as well. Tree line tent there. That's a four season tent, three to four person. It's called the Ponderosa. It's unbelievably built rooftop tent. It's got skylights, well built, great material, super spacious. Come on inside. I've been using it for a long time, Canadian company, and been in some super cold nights in the winter, as well as hot days in the summer. It's battle tested. I've been in through some just horrible storms to 80 kilometer, 90 kilometer winds, and it's held up amazing. Now, I mentioned the beginning of the video that there were some things that I, I don't like. One of them is the, the, the tent, and I'd like, the, not that I don't like the tree line, I do, but I'd like the opportunity to maybe try a clamshell design tent uh, that it's a hard top and they just go up and come down a whole lot easier. So I'd like an opportunity to maybe review or even try one of those. And the guys at West Coast Off-Roaders sell those. Um, so I'm looking forward to taking out one of their Jeep Gladiators um, that they rent as well as those rooftop tent styles, the clamshell hard top design. In BC, it's raining all the time, it seems like anyways, comparatively to some of the states. Where I'm going with that is, is the, the clamshell design. If the tent's wet, um, it's easier to stow and you don't have to set it up again to dry it off when you get home. Um, that's been my experience with the, the soft rooftop tent. And that's just by design. It's not specific to, to tree line. That's just the soft shell design. And I've also got rolling big power six inch lift. So you can see it's got quite the stance. They're a US company, RBP. And I did a full review on RBP, the six inch lift install as well. We went with an upper control arm from Fabtech. I think there's probably better choices out there. If I were to do that again, I wouldn't go with Fabtech. Slasher lights on the side here, guys. Can't forget the uh, the graphics. What's the deal with the, the wrap? That's by Prima Graphics. They did an amazing job both in installation and designing. It tells a bit of a story there with the West Coast Mountains. It's actually very similar to the background, isn't it? <laughs> On the F-150, the exhaust comes out the side. I brought them out the back. And if I were to do it again, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. You're more likely to catch your exhaust tips with the departure angle when you're off-roading, coming out the back, obviously, then coming out the side. And uh, in retrospect, I wouldn't have designed it that way, but I thought it would look cool, kind of like a Dodge look, right? Having it come out of the back, the dualies, but not such a good idea. I also paired that up with the JBA headers. Get things flowing a little bit better and uh, a little bit of more power as well, right? So, so we got the JBA headers and we got the JBA Exhaust dunes. So I talked about things that I would do differently. So you can see the tires just flopped off there. I actually had it strapped to the back, but when we were coming in here all hot, <laughs> off-roading, I guess it didn't hold, obviously. But I would consider going with a rack up top and then stowing the spare up there. That's an option. The 35 obviously doesn't fit underneath where the stock one goes. You know, some guys might want to consider putting the rooftop tent over the cab, but I had a concern with the weight because this is about 175 pounds. No problem on the rack, but when you start putting things on the top of your truck, that becomes a bit of a bit of sketchy situation there, especially if you're off-roading. 
I mean, it all comes down to what the purpose of your overlanding vehicle is. Do you need it to be a rock crawler? Do you need to tow? Is it a base camp unit and you're just doing a little bit of off-roading? So for me, get to spots far away and use this as my base camp. Set up the rooftop tent, set up your kitchen, and set up a nice fire, and then take the FE501 and go to places where even the Jeep guys can't get to. That'll make the Jeep guys angry, but... <laughs> but that's what we do. But, you know, I, I'd, be, I'd be interested in doing a Jeep build. But, you know, it's all compromises, right? The F-150 does a lot of things that are, in my opinion, better than a Jeep. And that's usually around space and towing. Last but not least, this guy right here. That's my... Here, let me pull it out. This is battle-tested here. So this is by Energy. It's called the Apex. They used to have one called the Kodiak. So it's a power bank or a battery powered or solar charging generator. I've got two 100 watt solar panels that plugs into this. And this is what I use for all of my charging requirements for the drone, for GoPros, for cell phones. And I use, even use it for some power tools. So you, you can see that it's just got tons of options here and it's a workhorse as long as i had a little bit of sun even if you've just got some overcast um, you've got the panels up it'll start it'll still or draw some solar energy and and it's quiet you're off the grid you know you're not one of those guys that's got the uh, the honda generator blasting and a lot of places don't like that or your neighbors don't like it this is just nice and quiet it's quiet it's stealthy i like it so guys there you go that's the f-150 uh 2014 overland review rig walk around if you want to find out more just go check out my overland build playlist like i said about a 12 videos there on all sorts of all you know on, on all the different steps we did and uh, any questions let me know guys stay safe i hope you're doing well we'll talk to you guys soon peace